Hello, I'm Sam Barone. I'm the Chief Medical Officer at Nanoscope Therapeutics. It's really an exciting time for us at, uh, at Nanoscope. We've recently announced the success of our randomized controlled Phase 2B Restore trial of our MCO10 optogenetic therapy in patients with retinitis pigmentosa. These patients had advanced retinitis pigmentosa, severe vision loss, no better than 20 over 1600. We were really proud to report that these patients actually gained vision following our MCO10 treatment, such that uh, we saw a greater than 0.3 logmar improvement in their vision. This was statistically significant compared to sham. By way of reference, 0.3 logmar is the equivalence to three lines or 15 letters on a standard ETDRS eye chart, and that's the uh, threshold that has been used to support approval in other ophthalmic indications like diabetic retinopathy and macular degeneration. We look forward with MCO10 for RP, uh, retinitis pigmentosa, to be uh, submitting an uh, application to regulatory authorities, specifically the FDA, uh, before the end of the year, seeing approval and marketing authorization. We're working as hard as we can to get this treatment to uh, patients uh, very soon. Uh, in addition to our retinitis pigmentosa, we've also started a, a program in Stargardt disease. Uh, with our same MCO10 optogenetic therapy. MCO10 works by transducing the uh, intact cells of the inner retina, specifically the bipolar cells. So in situations like in Stargardt disease or in other macular degenerations where the, uh, the disease in it is advanced and the photoreceptors are, are, are no longer available because of degeneration, but the, the cells of the inner retina are still intact, we are targeting those inner cells uh, and, and transducing them to express an exogenous light-sensitive protein and I get those cells to, uh, to turn into de facto photoreceptors. Uh, in our Stargardt program, we uh, conducted a study that we called Starlight. Uh, that, star that study enrolled six individuals uh, and they, it was an open-label study and they were all dosed with the uh, MCO10. The patients that we enrolled in our Starlight study had a little bit better vision than the vision that uh, had, was in the patients of our Restore Retinitis Pigmentosa program. They were still legally blind, but the vision being a little bit better, we were actually able to record their vision on a standard ETDRS eye chart. And we were, so we were actually able to see improvements in their vision on the standard ETDRS eye chart uh, by uh, capturing an increase in the number of letters read. We, in the study, we also uh, assess vision both with and without a wearable low vision magnifying aid, uh, and that actually amplified the effect that we saw at the end of the 48-week study. In our MCO10 program, both in retinitis pigmentosa and in Stargardt disease, safety continues to be a pillar of the program. Uh, there's been some mild or moderate adverse events, but have been very controllable with the topical eye drops. There's been no severe or serious ocular adverse events. None of the uh, ones that are particularly interested in the retina community regarding retinitis, vasculitis, endophthalmitis, or hypotony. We haven't seen any of those, so I said it continues to be a, uh, a pillar of the program. We look forward to, with our MCO10 program in Stargardt disease, we look forward to having discussions with regulatory authorities uh, in the middle of the year and initiating a phase three uh, study that we'll hope will support approval. Uh, we hope to initiate this before the end of the year. Can you tell us about how the procedure is done? Uh, so M MCO, uh, MCO10 as optogenetic therapy is administered by a single intravitreal injection uh, that can be done right in the office. It doesn't require any special, uh, any special surgery or surgical intervention. Uh, it's a, it's in, intravitreal injection is something that is a commonplace in every retina specialist's office uh, around the world. In situations with advanced photoreceptor loss, Blindness occurs and low vision occurs because we've lost those, those light sensitive, those photoreceptor cells, those light sensitive cells that uh, allow the initiation of the visual impulse and the perception of vision uh, in the brain. What optogenetics does is by transducing the cell, the intact cell, the remaining intact cells of the inner retina, specifically the bipolar cells in the case of our nanoscope therapeutics products, It'll, uh, it gets those cells to express an exogenous protein, a protein that they would not normally express, 
but then expresses these proteins that then makes, this, makes them light sensitive. So with, when they're stimulated by ambient light, there's no need for any kind of uh, external goggle or, or amplification method uh, for, for the light stimulation. Uh, it's sensitive enough in, in ambient light to then uh, depolarize those cells and that's where then the initiation of the visual impulse comes uh, and then can, can be conducted down through the, the normal neural pathways eventually to the brain and allows to the perception of vision. Again, in ambient light conditions, uh, the, the opsin protein that we express also has some very fast kinetics. So it allows for tracking uh, across uh, of, of a fast moving object and it's also stimulated at multiple wavelengths. So it's, it can be uh, uh, across the visible light spectrum as well. How many patients have been involved in each of these trials? At Nanoscope, we've, been, we've conducted uh, three different clinical trials where we have uh, administered MCO10 to, uh, to patients. Uh, our first was a phase 1-2-A study in advanced retinitis pigmentosa that dosed uh, 11 patients total. Uh, the second was our randomized controlled phase 2B restore trial that uh, dosed 18 patients and there was also 11 individuals in, uh, in a control group who were not dosed. And then finally in our StarGuard program we uh, dosed uh, six individuals. So there's a total of 35 that have, uh, individuals who have been dosed MCO10 across uh, all three of our studies uh, with uh, a, about uh, four or five years of a follow-up uh, total. What percentage of the people involved have had improvement from this treatment? Also, has it been more successful for the Stargard macular degeneration or retinitis pigmentosa group? Across our studies, we've seen uh, meaningful clinical benefits uh, in terms of improvements of best corrected visual acuity. In uh, just under half, or about 40% of our patients, have uh, reached thresholds of being clinically meaningful. But in addition to those clinically meaningful benefits on their ability for, to, to read an eye chart uh, or on a, a computer screen and optotypes of best corrected visual acuity, there's been other functional measures of, uh, of vision improvement that uh, we have conducted. And uh, all of our patients are seeing some kind of benefit on one of our other assessment tools. What are the other tools you're using to assess improvement? In, in addition to the, uh, so in addition to best corrected visual acuity, uh, there's several other types of assessment tools that, that we've been using. We understand that there's a lot more to vision than just best corrected visual acuity. We developed two novel assessment tools. Uh, one is a mobility course in uh, low light conditions, uh, and then other is a shape discrimination test. Uh, under different levels of a light condition as well. So those are, those are functional assessment tools testing different aspects of vision uh, and those have been uh, you know, very helpful in, in understanding and really complementing what we've been seeing from the best corrected uh, visual acuity standpoint. Uh, other assessments tools that we've been, that we've been using, uh, particularly in our patients with better vision like in our Stargard program, include uh, visual field testing and across the board also uh, we use uh, patient reported outcomes and uh, uh, capturing the benefit that pa the patients describe for themselves uh, with these therapies. How many treatment sites are you using? Uh, across our studies in the United States we have uh, we have used we have injected MCO10 at, at seven different centers. Uh, uh, we are currently working with uh, physicians and clinical trial sites in San Juan, Puerto Rico. Miami, Florida, McAllen, Texas, Houston, Texas, Los Angeles, and Fargo, North Dakota. Uh, as we look to expand uh, multinationally, uh, particularly in our Phase 3 StarGuard program, uh, uh, and the number of patients we're going to need to enroll, uh, we look to uh, expand to more centers as well. Uh, we will keep updates uh, uh, on our website or through uh, clinicaltrials.gov uh, of where, the, where our clinical trial sites are that are actively enrolling patients. Although the current trial is closed, do you anticipate open enrollment for the next phase of this trial? We anticipate initiating a randomized controlled phase 3 study in uh, Stargardt disease. 
uh, that will, we hope to will be able to support uh, registration and approval. We look forward to initiating that uh, before the end of the year. And uh, with that uh, an initiation, we'll be looking to start to enroll patients at that time as well. What are the requirement parameters for anyone wanting to get involved in this trial? As with any, as with any clinical trial, there are inclusion and exclusion criteria uh, to, to participate in the study. The main ones for our Stargard program would be an, a diagnosis of a Stargard disease that's been uh, genetically uh, confirmed, uh, as well as there's going to be a certain uh, vision thresholds. In this case, there will be low vision thresholds uh, uh, to be able to participate in the study.